This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash ev9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real-life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award-winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Postmortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. I told Valerie this story, but at Dan and Valerie's wedding, you know, they had the ceremony and it's beautiful and stuff. And then Dan and Valerie disappear into the venue, into the building, while the rest of us are mingling outside and they're rearranging kind of the seating. So it's for the, you know, the, the reception. And so we're all sitting outside at these different little tables. It was really nicely done because it wasn't like ballroom or banquet tables. It was really just groupings. It'd be like a table and there's a couch and two chairs here. And then over here is an actual dining table. And over there, it's like, just uh, almost like a cabana. And it, it was a nice kind of varied seating thing. So we're all sitting and waiting for them to make their appearance as husband and wife. And I don't know why, I turned around and I looked. And standing on the balcony of the venue, in darkness, shrouded in darkness, looking over everybody like a villain waiting for like the poisonous gas to come and kill everybody, is Valerie. And she's got a <laughs> glass of champagne in her, in her hand. And she looks so evil. It just... Plotting, he's like, that's right. I wasn't even drinking champagne. I mean, like, <laughs> what were you drinking? What was it? You, you had a drink in your hand. I was drinking margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even better. Yeah. <laughs> this mass murder is gonna be a, gonna be a party, not just a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good times! It's the day I learned the true nature of Valerie. Just the cold blooded, shrouded in darkness. Mass murder. Yes. <laughs> if you're gonna be shrouded in something, it has to be darkness, right? Either that or neck rubs, right? What? Am I right, Michael Douglas? I could not imagine spending three hours on something that I didn't like <laughs> after ten minutes. You don't like it. You are a weird individual to keep watching. What are you nuts? <laughs> You dedicated a week of your life to dislike something? Get a hobby, knit something, go for a walk. Previously on Cinephobe. How am I supposed to go back to the me before all of this pain? Excuse me, we're new in town and we've never had sex before. Would you give us a hand? I would have rather seen his cock. Out of way, Bobby! This episode in this movie exists. You bet your sweet ass I saw a lawnmower, man. Oh, Teddy. I'll call some guys from my neck of the woods. We're not talking, Brooke, about a couple of queens who know a few grapples. We're talking about Polacks that don't have a goddamn future. You have a stupid heart and a stupid brain. Regular Einstein. You think I'm a coward? You're wrong. I'm not a coward. You're the coward. I'm not a coward. I love cocaine. I do it all the time. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't mean fag like homosexual. I mean fag like retard. I got nukes shooting out of my dick right now. I've got so many nukes. Dick nukes. I mean, look at this buffet of ass. Mouth to dildo, dildo ass, ass to ass. Hi, Brant. Anal bees. I'm the goddamn talent, Maze. Look, Gene, I've never told anyone this before. My head! But I can suck my own dick. And I do it a lot. 1038. This movie is shit. You don't know shit. Holy shit, shit, bro. I had the same note, too. I swear to God, both of you guys are the biggest fucking liars in the world. Howdy, howdy, howdy. You should have saved this for the train. All right, au revoir, Lubin. Lisa, solid. Oh, I mean, why don't you just be like a regular person and dream about regular threesomes? Like clones. Give me some soul, kisses, baby. Hey, beautiful. Oh, dang. Oh, oh, my God. 
I can't indulge this comparison to a person that I mean may or may not know in a movie that has nothing to do with this podcast. That's some 20th century shit, bitch. We will tangle ass. Say hi to your mother for me. And you will lose. What's the end game? Okay, now everyone's dead. What is fucking Spence from Ballers? Who cares what the end game is? Garbage! I am proud. McCavity! <laughs> Now welcome one Valerie Levitard to I believe her podcasting debut within this universe, right? I, Valerie, I don't know if I if I'm saying the right thing there, but I this is the first time I've heard your voice on a podcast and I consume quite a bit of the Levitard show and friends content. So welcome to Cinephone. Thank you so much. I actually did one, but um, I'm going to go ahead and give you that. Okay. <laughs> well, it feels like this is the debut. She did the Greg Cody show, right? Starring Greg Cody. <laughs> the Greg Cody show starring Greg Cody in the in the big reveal of the uh, engagement announcement <laughs> that he's <laughs> that he betrayed everybody with. Um, Valerie, what is your relationship with the movie Disclosure? Can you disclose it? I can disclose. Um, I believe I saw that movie probably when I was uh, way too young. I- like probably 12 or something. Oh my God. Uh, Same. Same. Yeah. I I feel like I watched a lot of really terrible things when I was really young. So uh, that's really when I got into movies. (laughs) And specifically love all 90s. There are two that I realized I should never have watched as a child. One was Disclosure and the other one was Howard the Duck, which was wildly inappropriate. It was one of my favorite movies as a kid. And I must have seen that when I was like nine, eight or nine, something like that. Incredibly creepy, scary. Like, have you have you wa- rewatched it? Oh yeah. Oh, it's it's wildly inappropriate and terrifying at the same time. The monsters, everything. It's uh, Leah Thompson trying to have sex with a duck. Like everything is bad. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I remember watching Howard the Duck as a child and being disappointed. <laughs> Thought it was gonna be a lot better. What? And then I don't remember watching it again. I don't believe that you were disappointed in Howard the Duck as a child. There's no way. I was I had my hopes up. I thought it was gonna be better than that. Valerie, can you paint a picture for us? Where were you when you saw Disclosure? Did you go to the theaters? Did you see it with some friends? Were you with your parents? What happened? I used to, when I was really young, I would just watch a lot of movies with my brother. He's four years older than me. So I would kind of get all of the movies he would watch. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I was just I was home with my brother and my parents were like never there. So it's really sad, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting deep here. Um, I am shrouded in darkness. I mean, you are <laughs> shrouded in darkness. That's true. Every, uh, every villain has a backstory. Just remember, yeah, there's an origin your, story. Yours was just neglect with movies. Like, that's all it was. It really is. Who's the villain in Disclosure for you? Oh, God. I mean, I, I really hate Michael Douglas in this movie. Like, I think he's a total piece of shit. So um, I got to say, Michael Douglas, yeah. I'm going with that. I feel like I feel like Demi Moore is the more I've thought about this is like not just the hero, but a shining beacon of hope that you can you can crack into the corporate world. And even though you're going to be painted as a villain, she was like, I'll be back in a few years to buy this place. You know, like I feel like she's she's inspirational in this movie. Jessica. Uh, I can't say her last name. The new producer on uh, Levitar Show, whose name is her Smitty. first name is Jessica <laughs> Smetty. There you go. She made the comment that we'll know equality has happened when there's a female Stugats, right? When there's right. someone who's as brazenly incompetent as Stugats out here as a brand, as a forward facing brand. I submit to you that Demi Moore's character was kind of like the announcement of we'll know when equality hits when a woman can be in a position of power to sexually harass, I guess, a male subordinate employee. It's a fantasy in some way. Like, right? like this is, that's, that's not happening. I feel like but, now we're getting too deep into your mind here. I don't, well, I don't no. like that. I don't like that. Well, no. well, cause, well, well, here's why, Valerie, because he asked who's the villain. And because for me, one of the most villainous people was Michael Douglas's wife. Oh, she was a bitch from the beginning, right? Thank you! What? I, Thank yeah, you! Uh, what? Okay, first of all, you know, towards the end, I thought she was actually way too fucking cool about all of this. 
But like the first line, I don't remember what the line was, but it's like the first thing you see from her is that she's being a bitch. She says to him, because he's uh, calling or he's taking care of like one of his subordinates. And she's like, you're the one person who sucks up to people below you. Yeah, she's asking him to have a fucking spine. She's saying, look, I'm a hard-nosed lawyer who could go back to work at any time, but you're trying to be the breadwinner here, and I got to take care of these fucking kids every every goddamn day, and now I got to get Disneyland tickets for you? I have to get Disney. We live in Seattle. Why would she have Disneyland tickets? Like, no, I, I'm going to push back on all of this. I think that she is amazing this i never got the bitch vibe if anything i got the i'm sick of you trying to be like this alpha male that you're not michael douglas i think i don't know i well okay in the beginning i really thought she was um portrayed as a bitch i don't think it was her fault i just think they wanted you to see that about her so that you liked michael douglas more in the beginning Mm, i see okay so she's used as to make him a sympathetic character so yeah okay all right that i can get behind I'll buy that, except for the fact that when we get to the, where she's insisting, look, I have to accompany you to the deposition, because if I don't show up, that's going to look bad. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, she's a lawyer. She knows this stuff. Okay, no, that's fine. And no, it's it makes perfect sense, except for the thing that when she said, I have to accompany you, in my mind, I was worried of one thing. And lo and behold, she throws a tantrum. A tantrum? Right there at the thing. Yes, she threw a tantrum. He lied to her. It doesn't matter. You got to keep it cool. You got to wait till we get in the car before we do this. You can't do this out in public. She blew the whole case. It wasn't in public. It was a private meeting with her and Michael Douglas. And the only other people that could see were Catherine Alvarez, Michael Douglas's lawyer. Blew the whole case? They won the case. What are you talking about? The other side. The other side. They're on the other side of the glass. The other side was in some other glass offices on the other side of the mediation lair. They kept it separate. Erroneous. Valerie, what do you what do you think of her performance in the deposition? Because she does say, like, I need to be there for you. It's gonna look bad if I'm not there. I have to be the supportive wife. And then in there, I've like she's she's taken a lot of it very well, but also you can you can see the look on her face. It's not a great poker face. Like she is affected by a lot of this. I mean, yeah, I think anybody would be if they had to hear everything that went down and that Demi Moore was giving her husband a BJ and all of the details. Like, I feel like if your husband's cheating on you, you don't want to hear the details. You just kind of want to accept what has happened or don't accept it and move on. So, yeah, I think anybody would have that kind of reaction. For Michael Douglas in the meeting, the real turning point where he goes up there to discuss these these issues with the Archimax, I think it was called, it feels like... He's so stupid because you can clearly see that she is setting him up with all this stuff. And I'm curious, how did he think he was going to run a company if he's this dumb and can't see these obvious plays in front of him? I think Demi Moore was just, she she knew that he was, you know, Bambi and she came right in and she was, she targeted him. And yeah, I mean, I do think he was stupid. And also he was, um, he was just, he yeah, he he was made to be this innocent, you know, creature to be preyed upon by Demi Moore. She's supposed to be the villain. Right. I had another submission for villain and it's Stephanie who orchestrated this whole thing with vague emails, like the vaguest of emails instead of just telling them, look, she's coming to get you, dude. Don't fall for it. No, I'm going to email anonymously (laughs) and, and, and it's anonymous. So you could give detail at that point, but no, I'm going to take a step further and make it like a fortune cookie. And, and and at the end, lo and behold, who benefits from all this? Stephanie. A heady play. It is a heady play. I, I do think that she was kind of the hero of the whole story. And I was I, I was totally into it. I think Stephanie, uh, I I wanted to be her at the end of that movie. Wow. Yeah. I'll say it. Wow. <laughs> okay. The stealth bomber. Every villain has an origin story, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 12-year-old Valerie sitting there at the end of that Just movie, her, notes. Eye, her eyes grow wide as she realizes, oh, <laughs> in the shadows with the marionette strings pulling them thusly and making everyone dance, dance, cowards. <laughs> Valerie, Michael Douglas had a string of roles in the 80s and 90s where he is this sex symbol. He has women throwing themselves at him. 
He's never guilty of anything. It's always just happening to him. What do you think of Michael Douglas? Is he a handsome man? Too much knitwear in all of those movies. He's always wearing some stupid sweater. <laughs> um, and the second thing is, I think I, I'm not attracted to him. Like, I don't really get it. I don't understand why he was this like sex symbol in every movie. And I thought he was like way too like narcissistic all the time. I, I, I don't get it. However, I will say Donald Sutherland in that movie. Oh, <laughs> Donald Sutherland can eternally get it. Oh, my God. I mean, Donald Sutherland. Is- was it the beard? Yes. Yeah. The be- I mean, he was he was sexy. And I'm not just saying that because like I have daddy issues and he's an old man. Like I'm not. <laughs> it's just a sexy man. No, because he you can like. Michael Douglas, the idea that he's going to be the VP doesn't make sense, right? He's sniveling. He's whiny. He like doesn't see the power plays in front of him. Donald Sutherland, I buy that that dude's a billionaire and that he's in charge of this entire tech company. I buy that 100%. And that $100 million is the difference between life and death for me. That doesn't make so much sense to me in terms of just the money of it. I don't think the money works in this movie, but... Yeah, Donald Sutherland can get it. Absolutely. Okay, I want to go back to that, Zach and Valerie. You guys are praising Donald. So you saw, you guys watched The Undoing with Nicole Kidman on HBO last year. Mm-hmm. And you're sure seeing did. Donald Sutherland there and you're saying sex symbol. I'm saying undo me, Donald. That's what I was saying during that entire series. Are you kidding me? Forget Hugh Grant. Forget Nicole Kidman. That's the real power player there. Woo. God, he was regal in that movie <laughs> so he regal. Was surrounded by like, everything around him was beautiful and classical and his Outfits were wonderful. Like, I'm sure he was wearing silk half the time. Just. Oh, yeah. So you're taking the Sutherlands, Donald and Kiefer, over Kirk and Michael Douglas. Head to head, Hollywood royalty. I'm good on Kiefer, but if it gets me Donald, I'll take Kiefer. Yeah. Also, Kiefer's very short, which I don't like. Kiefer's very short. <laughs> I don't mind. Michael Douglas is short, as, as we pointed out in the, in the pod last time. Valerie, I got a question. So I asked this question. To the guys, if you were uh, Dennis Miller's character and your friend has been accused of this thing, what, what sort of approach do you Because Dennis Miller's character took a very kind of, you did this and you ruined this for everybody. He didn't even stand by his friend or anything. He's just thinking about his bonus. How would you behave if your friend were accused of something like that? Okay. He straight up went to the dinner with his wife and uh, Michael Douglas and her and his wife and just said everything. He put everything out on the table. He totally outed his friend. Like, I think he's a total piece of shit for doing that. Yeah. Like I, I would privately, I'd pull my friend aside and I would say, what did you do here? Because this is not cool. And yeah, I would not involve his wife at all. Just that was a really shitty move. Even if millions of dollars were on the table, Valerie? Yeah. Yeah, Pull him aside. Take him, you know, to a different area of the whatever this weird uh, dinner thing they were at. The Arboretum. (laughs) Yeah. And and talk to him privately. He's he's an asshole. I always think he's an asshole, but I hated him especially. What was the name of the... uh... The, the programmer who was only 23. Don Cherry. My, one of my favorite things about this movie is how many people who at the time were written to be like sympathetic characters. And in retrospect, like you're a piece of shit too. Well, yeah, this is the thing I don't really remember because again, I was like 12 when I saw this movie is, is I, I don't know if like, do we think at the time it held up? Do we think it, like at the time it was like the tech jargon? Not the tech jargon, just the just the personalities. Just the like I can give a fuck if the tech jargon holds up. Well, that's not what they call storage devices at all. What is this, the twentieth century? Twentieth <laughs> century, bitch. Um I, no, like just like the idea of like you know, he's a sympathetic character. Like, you know, Don Cherry's a good guy. Dennis Miller is, you know, backstabbed and then has to backstab. Like, we're, is there anyone at the time in this movie? Because I think now in the retrospect of what's happened in the 26 years since or whatever it's been, 27 years, that um, that we're like, okay, we have more knowledge of, like, what's acceptable in a workplace. Like, obviously slapping your assistant on the ass with a file folder. Not okay. Like, but at the time, were people looking at that and going, that's yeah, fine. It's just, it's just guys being guys. I think so. I think so. I think even then, okay. I think even then they wanted you to be sympathetic for Michael Douglas. Like they, 
at the end, do you remember what happened? When she comes back, the assistant comes back and slaps him on the ass like, <laughs> like it was no big deal. Got you back. Yeah. <laughs> I was mortified. I, I think I, yeah. You were mortified. <laughs> I didn't know you could get mortified. <laughs> <laughs> so Valerie, you told me something hilarious when, when we decided to bring you on this podcast was you said anytime disclosure is on, you'll stop and watch it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about disclosure brings you back? I like the feeling of sitting in awkward. Like, I think there's so many awkward moments in that. Like, I, I think it was just gold. Um, the sex scene in that alone is like, it's probably the most awkward I've felt in a movie. Are you hoping to jump onto the cable channel before the sex scene if it's of after course. the sex scene are you less likely to to hang with the movie oh i'm a lot more likely of the sex scenes coming but i'll still watch the so i asked zach i said if he were in a similar situation <laughs> where he was being accosted and ravished by this woman and he said no 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 and then at one point 31 knows equals a yes Tears the underwear off of Demi Moore and is on the verge of insertion. And then at that point says, I can't do this. Well, he looked at himself in the reflection. But my, my point was this. I said, at that point, you've already cheated, right? Like it's. He was fingering her. He was fingering her and he got his dick sucked. And oh, yeah. That wasn't his oh. fault, though. The, the oh. Getting his dick sucked was not his fault. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I, okay no he was just he was okay it's to me yes. more i know he made the whole you know he said that she does an hour i don't know what he said he an hour on the stairmaster every day every day she could kick everyone's ass like no she couldn't you're just because you're short doesn't mean you couldn't push a woman away like <laughs> when she's trying to give you a blowjob and i also want to note like that had the most amazingly like the the music kind of like was making it like this yeah. was a traumatic thing for him like the music was very dramatic it was probably the most like he didn't look traumatized movie. let me tell you <laughs> he did not <laughs> nor did i the most dramatic yeah. blowjob in a movie ever you guys think <laughs> oh no no there been a more dramatic blowjob swordfish swordfish that's true Valerie, have you seen swordfish I was probably 11 when I saw Sword Fish. <laughs> <laughs> so before disclosure. <laughs> well, no. We're going to have to have a conversation with your parents. <laughs> or your brother. I mean, so, like someone. Yeah, you know, they don't even know it's my birthday today. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's your birthday? Today's my birthday. Yeah. You're doing this on your birthday? Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. what a gift. Happy birthday. Thank you. I, I wouldn't trade it for a thing talking about disclosure on my birthday. Is Are you a big birthday person? Like, is that is that something that's that's a big deal to you? I do like birthdays. Yeah. OK. Like, I like my birthday and everyone's birthday. I mean, doesn't like anyone's birthday. He won't wish anybody happy birthday, um, even in a meaningless text. But I like celebrate celebrating someone's birthday. I like celebrating my own birthday if it's someone else's idea. But I don't like getting people organized to celebrate my birthday. It's a, it's a, I don't know if that's a narcissistic thing. I don't know what that is, but there's something where I'm like, I don't want to do it. But if you guys want to celebrate, I'm in. Otherwise, I'm cool to just chill. I think you want to feel special. Right. You're going to do this whole thing and invite all these people. And then you look like an asshole because you've done this huge production. Right. That's how, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. I, this is my thing. It's not that, it's not that I don't like sell. I mean, if you said, hey, we're all getting together, Zach's birthday at, the Surly Goat, which is a bar that Zach likes a lot in LA. I'm there. Well, we both like. What was that intonation? Exactly. Like we like you wanted to go there more than I have. You feel betrayed now, don't you? I do feel but I feel betrayed because this asshole it goes there and there's this one bartender who they he and he and Amin talk about the show Black Sales on oh, Stars, which they're the show. only two All people right. who's ever watched this show. No. And they get to and they get to talk about it together, and that's it. Because one of the actors sometimes goes in there, but we've never seen him. No, but it's still cool, though, man. We go to the bar where the actor goes to. But also, I go because you like it. Not because, like, I... Not the- I went because it was close to my old place. Anyways, if that were the scenario, I will go. I will have a ball. In fact, the last birthday party I went to was Arash Markazi's birthday in in uh, West Hollywood. I flew from Boston, landed in LA, dropped my stuff off at the hotel and went straight to it. You know why? Because I love a, no, it wasn't open bar. 
I, but there might have been. But, but I love a good time. I love a good time. I love celebrating a good time. But like cards, texts, um, gifts, uh, these things do not interest me at all. They, and they, and I find them very um, kind of robotic and formulaic. We're just do. We're going through the motions because that's what society tells us Ooh, we got to do this the only birthdays i will actually get gifts and cards and stuff for are my kids and that's just because i want them to grow up well adjusted i don't want them to grow up and be like 25 years old and say i've never had a birthday in my life you know and then they turn into serial killers or whatever so that's the only reason i do birthdays for them but otherwise i'm like okay i don't care my birthday was two weeks ago did any of you guys wish me a happy birthday no and i don't care that's why you probably just didn't tell anybody it was your birthday. I mean. yeah. Happy birthday, I mean. Belated. Too late. I'm not going to wish you a happy birthday. Anymore. Don't do Thank it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That way, see, it's a quid pro quo here. See, I don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Life's easier. But anything, if anything, that's her celebrating your birthday for you in the fullest. Because now you don't get it. So it's actually a good little bit of reverse psychology. Right? You don't want people to say happy birthday. You don't want people to celebrate it. And by her saying, I'm not going to wish him a happy birthday... Now she has actually done the thing that you thought you wanted, but by doing that, she has now celebrated it. No, 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 no. no, no. no here's the your... deal. Back to your question about uh, about the the thirty one nose. What what were you what were you trying to throw me under the bus for? No, I'm just saying that at that point, Michael Douglas should have gone on with it. Like it's it's too late. There's no part of this that would save the act. He's already committed adultery. Three or four different ways here. He has committed adultery there, but also it could get a lot worse, right? I think a moment of consciousness maybe saves his marriage in that moment. Whereas if he just goes full bore, then that shit's over. He's got custody hearings now. He's getting housed in a divorce because, by the way, wife's a lawyer, but he's getting destroyed. And he's losing his job because it was a setup. Valerie, do you think Michael Douglas redeemed himself by stopping after? Both digital and oral uh, penetration. I didn't say he redeemed himself. I'm just saying it could have been a lot worse. He saved his marriage? Yes. I think it would be a lot worse for her if he went all the way and then tried to regret it later. At least he regretted it in the middle. Mm -hmm. So there is a line because the movie clearly believes that there's a line between blowjob and fingering and full on sex. Yeah, I mean, well, okay, he could have, you know, contracted something from Demi Moore. We don't know, you know, at this time, we don't know where she's been. We don't know, Good call. you know, like she could be doing this all over the world. We don't know. She's a sexually aggressive woman, Valerie. Yeah. She likes it. She is, and that's okay, you know? But like, I, or she he could have gotten her pregnant. I don't think that they had a condom. No, um, no, 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 there was no protection in there. Got way worse. I yeah. Think. Slightly redeemed. It's a health concern as well, I mean. I think I found the real villain that we haven't named. We didn't even name it in the original episode. The real villain was whoever told Michael Douglas's kids. Oh, yeah. Valerie, that's a wild moment where his daughter's like, I never believe what they said about you, dad. <laughs> and it's literally been three days since he was fingering to me more. Like three. It's been three days. Like the timeline in this movie is insane. That's really funny because I feel like I must have fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I didn't tell you guys but I had to rent this movie twice because I kept falling asleep and the, it had lapsed like and it's like 48 hours or whatever when I decided to pick it up again yeah there was a lot of really bad stuff in that movie which is, I nodded off who was the hero of the movie Valerie um was, was her name S Stephanie right oh Stephanie oh yeah that's right you, you said Stephanie I thought it was Muhammad what Muhammad doesn't have that conversation with him he doesn't know, like, you know, thanking him about the Disneyland tickets and all that. He doesn't know that there's a separate conversation being recorded on the Jakarta side. Or Jakarta, where were they? In Malaysia. Malaysia. It was Malaysia. And Kuala Lumpur. And then also he sends him the transcripts uh, via fax on one long sheet of paper. This feels biased. Well, why, <laughs> why is it biased, Zach? What? Because a guy named Muhammad can't be the hero? Is that is that what you're saying? No, I've, Muhammad is often the hero. Often? <laughs> name another movie. Name another movie where Muhammad Muhammad Ali, hero. dick. How about that? Name, name another one. Name a second <laughs> Name two. 
Um, I I want Stephanie to be the hero. I like this idea, but her son sucks so much. I can't give it to her. Her son is terrible. I hate his hair. I hate his chin. I hate this stupid ass grin on his face. Like he's like, your mother's an incredible woman. He's like, you're just now finding this out. How is that the last line you hit you in a movie on? Like that can't be it. No, I know. That's awful ending. I, I'm going with Demi Moore. I think Demi Moore's the hero in this. She unearthed all this stuff. She was set up by sexy Donald Sutherland um, to to do this plan and then take the fall when it didn't work. And okay, she didn't play the game correctly, right? Like she struggles throughout playing this game, but it was also set up to destroy everyone but Donald Sutherland because in the end, he still wins. So I think Demi Moore is the hero. And I think she is going to come back and buy that place in a few years. Yeah, when they're bankrupt for selling faulty drives that don't work and CD-ROMs. Hey, that's good business. You buy low, you sell high. Valerie, when Michael Douglas comes home with scratches on his chest, he's feeling a little shitty. He just goes straight to the shower and his wife says, no kiss? That's not why he went straight to the shower. Not feeling shitty. It's because he was feeling shitty, Zach. You know, you had a tough day, all right? He thinks he's going to get caught. Yeah. Do you insist upon a hello kiss when Dan comes home? And if he didn't, would you be suspicious? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, hmm. Oh, hmm, what was that all about? Because clearly that's <laughs> what they do like every single time he comes home. That's why she said no kiss. Right. It's out of the norm. Something fishy going on. Do you guys kiss as soon as you like you've been apart? You walk in after a long day or whatever. Do you kiss as soon as you see each other? I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's always. But if it were. The other thing about that scene that triggered me was the wife walks into the bathroom with the beer. Which, by the way, we didn't mention this. She then proceeds to drink herself. So, thus eliminating the whole... Well, I mean, they get him... Took a little sip. Get your own beer. Uh -uh. She doesn't want a beer. She just wants a sip. Yeah, she just wants a sip. (laughs) I want to talk about the concept of the conversation that happens in the bathroom. I'm using the facilities, and here comes Mrs. Michael Douglas, whose name escapes me now. Um... To have a full-on conversation. Like, can we wait until I get out the shower? So, Valerie, what is your policy on bathroom conversation? First of all, I'd like to say that she got him a beer because as soon as he walked in from cheating on her, he fucking said, fetch me a beer. Yeah. And plug in my cell phone. And plug in my cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, here's your second task after I cheat on you. Here's what you have to do now. (laughs) But she's the bitch. Right. Yeah. She's the bitch wife. I mean, that's great misdirection. Great misdirection. He's got to get in the bathroom without her noticing. Exactly. But it was all very selfish. And so once he gets in the shower, he's turned around. She wants to talk a little bit. And I will answer the question because I, I, we talk, my husband and I talk all day, all, all night in the bathroom. So I, I love a good bathroom conversation. The acoustics are great. Yeah. Acoustics are great. Yeah. Good. Yeah. My voice sounds good. So I feel like. Um, That's the important part. He's hiding, yeah. <laughs> so the scratch is on his chest. He's, hi- he's hiding from yeah. her. And then she finally is going to hand him the beer when he comes out. And he's hiding. He doesn't dry off at all. He's soaking wet. He takes the towel. He just puts the towel up here on his like. What is like a baby? Like what is that? Yeah, he swaddles. He swaddles nothing. So modest. Yeah, it was just gross. All of it was gross. I don't know how long that towel is, but I'm guessing even on such a short man as as Michael Douglas, like that previously cheating dick, just hanging, hanging out there, oh, drip yeah. drying, air drying. No, he definitely. First of all, it was definitely like not the hand towel, but like the dry your hands towel, <laughs> like in the bathroom. It, it looked like a beach towel on him. Right. Because he threw it here, <laughs> he did a very interesting thing. Like the bottom of the towel basically covered the scratch, and then the rest of it went up. Yeah, and he just dried his hair. Right. While the rest of everything was just soaking, dripping wet, as Zach pointed out. Again, heady play. But why do you guys? Why can't you guys wait until like the bathroom activity has ended in order to commence conversation? Is it is it pressing, or are you guys just like the this need for efficiency? What is it? I think she was used, she was not used to having a woman call at seven o'clock at night and say, oh, a meeting's been changed in the morning. Like, and she was like, what the hell was that about? So first of all, I don't get my kiss. And now I'm getting, I'm, I have to, I have to talk about this phone call. That's a great point. Are we sure 
that Demi Moore lied to her on that conversation and she didn't just fuck up the times. That's the other thing I've been thinking about a lot. What are we doing here? What are we doing Nothing. here? Well, I'm, I'm painting a picture of someone who's unreliable, who is uh, erratic. Unreliable? Did Muhammad get those tickets and that upgrade at the hotel? Unreliable. Yeah, like after she gave him shit about it, like, that, I got to throw a ticker tape parade every time you do something? This is absurd. This is absurd. No, the, the bathroom. Power con- rankings. Stephanie, villain number one. Number two, the wife. Number three, whoever told the kids that their dad was diddling someone three days earlier. The better question, do we think the mom, the wife, or the uh, the nanny? Chow man. Do we, who, do we think she told? Because at, Valerie, at one point, Michael Douglas says, hey, Chow man, get down here. I'm going to exert my dominance. Like, he loses it. And that has to be, even for 1994, that has to be a problematic situation. Did he mean that he was going to like have sex with her? Like, yeah. Yes. In front of the wife. I mean, yeah. Just another reason Michael Douglas is the villain of this movie. Zach, if you were the babysitter and you were summoned thusly and yelled at by Michael Douglas to get down here, sans context, you don't know anything. You just hear them yelling. You came, hey guys, can you keep it down? Kids are sleeping. And Michael Douglas looks up at you and says, why don't you get down here? I want to exert my dominance. Would you then turn around and tell the kids, yo, your daddy is some shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he walked back in there, like, they're like, what? what's that noise? Like, your dad is wilding right now. Oh my God. You would not believe what he just said to me. And here's why he apparently has been dicking his, his boss at home, you know, in, in the office. Like, that's what's going on. Less than 48 hours ago. Listen, <laughs> his dick was in her mouth. <laughs> Did the kids have details? This is the, I could have used a deleted scene on this child. Find what she knew. I never believed what they said about you. Like, what did they say about me? Um, I actually think maybe uh, the children were a villain as well, because from the very beginning, they were super annoying. Like, come on. Okay. She asked. She's reading his email. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And And just the conversation they were having, like just annoying kids. And then the mom had asked one of the children if they had peed. And as soon as they get in the car, he's like, I have to pee. After he had said he peed. Like, he's a bit of a villain. Guys, you know what, what Valerie just laid out? The same exact argument that Hook laid out in the movie Hook, where he tells the kids, <laughs> hey, <laughs> your, your, your parents hate you. You've ruined their lives. The reason they send you to bed early is so they can just have three minutes of peace. And you know what Hook was in the movie Hook? Hero. The villain. Valley, have you seen Hook? I, I think I need to rewatch that. I don't. No, you don't. You don't. Trust <laughs> you, <it's... laughs> Two and a half hours. Yeah, it's so, it's so long. Wow. Yeah. Two and a half hours. Okay, I have a question because before. I was going to plug our podcast, but go ahead, Zach. <laughs> you plug the podcast that people are listening to? Yes, go back and listen to the Hook episode. It was really good. Now, what does cinephobia mean? Oh, but don't watch the movie. <laughs> I guess watch the movie. All right. <laughs> don't watch the movie. Um, so Dan Dan said before before we started rolling that if because he heard us talking about smoking aces, if smoking aces is on TV, he will stop and hate watch it. If disclosure is on TV, you will stop and watch it. So if both movies are on, which movie is getting watched or? Are we retiring to separate rooms to where both both people can be fulfilled with their movie watching? We're probably watching Smoking Aces because of that elevator scene. Oh, oh spoiler. <laughs> Future callback. I still haven't finished it. I'm 30 minutes in. <laughs> the elevator scene's great. Just no. That's the only reason to watch the movie. I thought the same about Disclosure for the elevator scene. Going down. Oh, yeah. No, no, not that one. The one with Donald oh, Sutherland. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh. Right? Okay. His panic attack. My fantasy. <laughs> Ooh, that- <laughs> okay, so this leads me to a conversation we had. Uh, we have a, an award we give out each podcast to the actor who acted his or her ass off, meaning it was an incredible performance, and the actor who acted his or her ass on, meaning we left a lot to be desired. And Michael Douglas got shoved into the acting his ass off on category because of his reaction waking up out of that panic attack slash nightmare his scream just wasn't convincing it wasn't believable ah (laughs) because it was it wasn't a scream of panic nor was it a scream of delight right because i could see what waking up from that 
that <laughs> nightmare, quote unquote, and then all of a sudden just like, whoa, we get back to sleep. That's exciting. Donald's coming for me. You feel the tension in the dreams right now? I know I do. I feel it all the way into my plums. Did you see how soundly she was sleeping when he woke up in a night terror? Like, is she used to this? Oh, that's a good question. Does he have night terrors? Yeah. <laughs> that's a great observation. I didn't even think of that. He was sleeping like a baby next to oh him. My God. Oh, that ambient. Clearly, she wasn't staying up all night worrying about why he avoided the kiss and why he was covering his chest. He, he deflected that and she was able to sleep peacefully. Why is he wearing a t-shirt? Does Dan wear a t-shirt to bed or is he just topless? No, Dan's always topless at home. Always? Yeah. As soon as he gets home, the shirt comes up. <laughs> Does he fling it down with the disgust of like, I'm sick of these cages? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I find shirts everywhere all the time. They're all over the house. I'm the same way with pants. As soon as I'm in the door, pants or, pants or shorts are off. Like I hate wearing pants. So I get that. They do feel like cages. I, I, that's, I'm the same way with a bra. Yeah. As soon as I get home, it is like party time. Got to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm big on basketball shorts, man. They're just nice and comfy. Yeah, outside. No, everywhere. Basketball shorts. That's a, I come, I come, you know, I come to record in my little condo studio or whatever. And I literally will take off. I don't need to know. We, this is too much information. Yeah. See, they're right here. My pants are right here. Took them off. Put on my basketball shorts. Now, now I can work. Now I can record it. Why wouldn't you just wear basketball shorts there? No, no, because you never know what's going to happen between there and here. What? What do you mean? You never know what's going to happen. It's unpredictable. Like you might find yourself in a meeting? What are you talking about? You never know. I, I like being presentable when I go. And also, I love pockets, right? Like back pocket. You like being presentable. I do. It, it, it's shameful to show a man's shins, you know. No. Skies out, thighs out. That's my motto. If the sky is out, the thighs need to be out. I said shins. Valerie, we have another award on this podcast called the Golden Dumpster, which is either the, the best, worst, or most memorable moment. Is it safe to say that yours is the elevator fantasy? I Can we just go back really quick to that other one? Do oh, ass on, ass off? Yes, please. Yeah. Who was acting their ass off? I would like to nominate um, the guy on the ferry that we saw twice in the movie for some reason. <laughs> yes. The jobless man. What was he doing there? He's like the ghost of unemployment past. <laughs> It's so strange to keep seeing him. I'll tell you what he was doing there. He was interrupting people on their phone calls. Oh my God. On the phone, just talking. And, th and thinking of the golden days of yesteryear when you could just, you know, not have to worry about a woman taking your job. <laughs> He's broad. Oh He's my God. Out of control. Yeah, he was there for us. He was there for no other reason except to like make us feel like there was some kind of weird thing going on with um job disparity right <laughs> these damn <laughs> women coming for our jobs can't have not it not accurate okay yeah i like that for for ass off i like that who who had their ass on I, yeah i think michael douglas like in the first part where he was talking to that guy who was um explaining the guy who kept sending the nuts who was that guy the guy from the guy from malaysia not yeah. muhammad but not the, muhammad the, white the other guy, dude the white yeah. guy yeah. arthur yeah. arthur yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the beginning. And it was just like, I was like, what are you doing, dude? You don't seem concerned about this at all. I feel like your heart's really not in it. So, yeah, I'm going to just, I'm going to say Michael Douglas is the worst actor in the movie. All right. Golden Dumpster, Valerie? Oh, you know what my favorite thing was in this entire movie? Is when he and Demi were done with the uh, dramatic blowjob scene. He told Demi Moore, why don't you take those two champagne bottles and you fuck them? You know, like I, I honestly, I feel like one champagne bottle would be enough. Like, why would she take two champ? Like, well, she's a, an aggressive sexual woman, you know, and she likes it, and you can't handle it. So they used to experiment yeah. with vibrators and other technology. Yeah, no offense <laughs> to your knowledge of this movie, Valerie, but I feel like Michael Douglas's character knows that her knows her sexual habits a little bit better. Hers too. Got it. Yeah, there's a history there. Yeah, she threatened his life, by the way. <laughs> I just thought about that right now. Like, that's a real wild reaction to being turned down for sex. Like, just to scream, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What a movie.
You saw this when you were 12, you said? Yeah, 12 years old. Valerie, phobe or file for the movie Disclosure? Oh, phobe. It's terrible. Wow. Terrible wow. movie. So it's a hate watch for you. It's a hate watch. Yeah, I wow. will watch it over and over again. I love to, I love to hate it. There's so much tension. I'm kind of taken aback. Uh, yeah, I, I thought there was going to be an easy file. Yeah. You spoke so fondly of this movie. <laughs> well, did she though? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of this sucks, the bitch wife, a lot of, you know. <laughs> Shout out to the bitch wife. I'm glad I'm not the only one, man. Oh they made it God. seem like I, I just, could... I was out of control. Well, it's a pattern of behavior with you. What? It's oh. a pattern of behavior. You've to be. called Carla Gugino the bitch wife in a movie where she wasn't anybody's wife. Wait, what movie was that? Snake Eyes. You're like, oh yeah, she always plays the bitch wife. And I'm like, she what does are you always play about? the bitch wife. I'm, I'm not calling, I'm saying that's the, the role that she always plays. She can do no wrong. She's typecast. No, she's not. There's no way. I have another golden dumpster about this movie, I think. So he was talking, he was arguing with his wife after that like dinner thing. And she said about Demi Moore, was she trying to quit smoking? As if like by putting a (laughs) dick in her mouth would uh, help her. So like. Oral fixation. Yeah. Yeah. So. I didn't even pick up on that. That's a great line. There's a dicker rat joke in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one that asks him, how did Demi Moore look? Yeah, Raider on a 10 scale. Yeah, I would have done that. What's the right answer to give? I feel like he was on the right path by being truthful. Because if she would have seen her, like, you can't lie. Would know. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he, I know he meant 10 when he said nine. And so did his wife knew it too. He started with eight. Eight. And she was like, eight. really? <laughs> and he's like, eh, nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have followed up with "What am I" on a ten scale? <laughs> no. Oh, that, no, you can't. No, you can't do that. No, no, you can't do that to anyone. I mean, that's just not. It's not right. But it does happen. <laughs> it does. You happen. can't do it. But that is. T- I think that's typically the. Well, then, what am I? Really? I think so. Well, in my experience in the past, yes. That that, <laughs> that question <laughs> that question is a gateway to a fight. <laughs> Hey, Zach, now who's got a pattern of behavior? What? Yeah, that's right. I've never been asked that question. Okay. Yeah. You know why? Because you're a misogynist? <laughs> <laughs> you like to throw words. I think you'd be very truthful. I mean, I would be afraid to ask you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Valerie, but here's the thing. Here's a little information maybe you don't have is that Amin has been pretending to like numerology just to impress one woman on Instagram. <laughs> so if you ever see him posting 1111, feel the power or something like that, you know, that's the universe talks to me, Valerie. And Zach is upset because he doesn't have that same connection with a with a higher energy force or being out there. It's all good, Zach. You'll find it one day. Is that energy force or being DMD back? No, it has it. <laughs> But I know it. Here's my my pleas. <laughs> here's my cries. <laughs> I'm hoping she's gonna listen. She will. Uh, she will. <laughs> oh, well, oh. Valerie, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, this part of the Disclosure Podcast. And we were very excited to. We even bumped a a previous guest idea uh, because once you once your interest in disclosure was known, it had to be you for this for this guest spot. So thank you for I'll just say it, whether it's true or not, making your podcasting debut on the Cinephobe podcast. Thank you so much. I would I wouldn't want to do anything else on my birthday. <laughs> what a great way to spend your birthday. Just <laughs> I mean, you guys can go get drinks and dinner later, but it's not going to compare to this. It's all downhill from here. Yeah. Valerie. <laughs> it's been super fun. Next time we make love. You introduced me to Jade.